If relationships are the real currency in life, if referrals are the lifeblood of business, how do we, the entrepreneurs, the small business owners, compete in this ever-changing, fast-paced world? How do we become more so we can attract more? My name is Curtis Lucy, and I'm your host. Those are the questions, and in this podcast, we will reveal the secrets. Welcome, everybody. I am super thrilled and honored to be able to have Mr. David Fry, who's been a mentor for me for over a, over a decade. And I would have to say that there's coaches and then there's coaches. There's mentors and then there's mentors to the mentors. And he's definitely one for me. I had shared some, some life-changing information over lunch, breakfast over the years, seeing him at different events. And I just want to say thank you for being a friend and always opening up and asking the tough questions as well as always openly sharing your wisdom. And Thanks, I want to thank you so much for that. And the title of this, because he wants to bring the absolute most value in the shortest period of time. So we are going to get right down to business. And the title of this is how to generate a never ending stream of local customers and referrals using Facebook, even if you're dead broke and starting from scratch. So, Mr. David Fry, if you don't mind sharing a quick background of you, and then because you know, referrals is your is your language, and I'd love for you to share a quick background, and then we'll we'll dive right into it. Thanks, Curtis, and thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. My name is David Fry, and back in around 2002, I published a book called The Small Business Marketing Bible, that then quickly became the number one best selling marketing book on the internet. Um, for small businesses. And then I came out with a product called Instant Referral Systems, which for many years was the number one selling product on the internet, teaching people a lot of different strategies for getting referrals for the local businesses. And uh, I started a company that uh, went around the nation doing seminars on how to generate more referrals for all different types of businesses. Uh, but that was a different day and time. Now, Facebook wasn't even available back then. Today, Facebook is available and um, it has become the number one referral generating platform tool on the face of the earth. Yes, there's a lot of referrals passed in referral groups and from mouth to mouth. But the vast majority of referrals that are being passed on today are being passed on through Facebook. Wow. And so we're going to talk about that today. Now, you say that there's, there's three things to generate consistent, high quality uh, referrals. You know, what are the, the three top things that you can share? Well, number one, you need to build a large network of local people that know you, like you, and trust you, right? A large network on Facebook of local people. Okay, hmm. There's a big difference there because I'll bet there's a, a, on your Facebook profile, you are friends with a lot of people that are not living in your local area. Mm -hmm. So you need to, to build a large network of people that live right down in your city or your farming area, provide them with content to get them to know you, like you, and trust you. The number two thing is to make sure that people know what you do and how well you do it. Okay, here's a very strange thing, a phenomenon that I've seen on Facebook. People don't even need to know if you're good or not. If they know you and like you and trust you and they know what you do, you're going to be the person that they refer. I, I It's just... I, I know you say in your brain, well, I wouldn't refer to someone that I didn't, you know, think was awesome. But the fact is online, the people that get referred the most are the people that have a wide network of people that know, that know them and trust them and know what they do. Hmm. Okay. And the last one is just to continue to stay on the top of their mind. And you can do that on Facebook. We're going to, we're going to talk all about that today. Now, why did you say on Facebook and not like only in person? Because Facebook, seven <laughs> and people in the United States, I bet seven out of 10 people in your local area, unless, you know, you live out in, you know, rural America or something like that. But seven out of, out of um, 10 people 
in the United States and probably in your local area are on Facebook. Now, not all of them are active, but they are on Facebook. Let me give you an example. I live in a little city called Friendswood, Texas. There is a Facebook group called Friendswood Moms and Dads. And by the way, I'm just going to tell you, if you're watching me on video, I will be looking down on my screen because I am pulling a lot of the content today that I'm going to talk to you about from a private presentation that I was asked to do to a very specific small audience. And so please don't let that throw you off. But here in my local town, there's about 28,000 people. In this uh, Facebook group, there's 6,000 residents that live right here in Friendswood. That's 21% of all the local adult residents that are in this Facebook group. And most of them are active or they would never have joined a Facebook group. Usually somebody who's not really active on Facebook doesn't post and certainly doesn't join a group. So most of them are active on Facebook, 21% of everybody in my local little city outside, it's Friendswood is outside of Houston, um, in that Facebook group. That just goes to show you that there are a lot of your local people right here on Facebook talking every day. Wow, I mean, isn't Facebook more or less on the impersonal side? Do you like, I mean, because what you just shared right there seems very <laughs> personal. Yeah. So, you, you know, when you know somebody face to face, obviously that is going to be a much deeper relationship and that's mm -hmm. the goal. But on Facebook, you can build a much wider audience of people that know you and like you and trust you, but that have never even had a very personal uh, encounter with you. And so on Facebook, the benefit is that you can, you can create a very large network of people that know who you are versus offline. You might, you know, you can only go to lunch with so many people yeah, uh, true. a day, right? <laughs> yeah. In Facebook, it can almost kind of be confusing when you're going about starting a business or because there's Facebook pages, there's Facebook groups, there's your personal profile. Do you mind sharing as it comes to like a referral strategy, what to use and the mindset behind it? Because I texted you this recently. <laughs> right. That's a great question. You've got Facebook pages, which are different than Facebook groups. And then you have your personal profile. And what I'm suggesting is you use your personal profile. And let me tell you why. Facebook pages uh, unless you're advertising on your Facebook page, it will get almost no reach. In other words, you can post something and hardly anybody will ever see it. And that's just the way Facebook pages have matured. Today, if you want to get any reach on your Facebook page, you have to run ads. Facebook groups, the reason I, I would never use a Facebook group for local... Um, becoming a celebrity locally is because you want to promote your business. But in local Facebook groups, there's this culture of it's not good to promote your local business. That's pretty much true in all Facebook groups. There's usually a lot of rules that say, Hey, don't, don't talk about your business in Facebook groups. And so, and it, but it's even hyper more in a local community. And so Facebook has a rule that you cannot use your personal profile for your business. Okay. So that is true. But what they're, what they're talking about is people who just constantly, every post is posting stuff with no value, just advertising their business or their product and, and putting links everywhere that type of Facebook profile is going to be eventually banned. I'm not talking about that whatsoever. We're going to provide a ton of value on our Facebook profile, but also we're going to sprinkle in some promotional posts of our own. Your personal profile, number one, is going to get way more reach than a business page. And your personal profile is just, um, it's just more personal. Okay. When someone comes to your personal profile, they're expecting that that is you, right? Not your business. That is you. And um, 
The only drawback on your personal profile is you cannot advertise. In the early days of Facebook, you could. You cannot anymore. So if you want to uh, take this you know, strategy to the next level, you can do it on a Facebook page, but just know that you're going to need to advertise. Okay. So, so when you say advertise, so I have a Facebook page advertise, there's like boosting, there's running different. And I know that's a whole nother course, another conversation, another day. Do you mind summarizing it for our people? Cause there's also people that built careers out of helping people just do this. <laughs> right. Well, everything you're going to learn today, all the different types of content posts you're going to learn, you can actually, um, just put $10 to that post and, and advertise it or boost it, whatever you want to call it, to your local area that you're marketing to. And um, you're going to get way more reach. But there's always going to be that little uh, thing that's going to say promotion. So they know it's an advertisement and it's not a personal thing, which detracts a little bit from the authenticity of your post. But at the same time, if you have the money, then it might be a smart thing to do all this on your Facebook page and just put money toward boosting that post into your local area so that, you know, a larger portion of people see it. So recently I've done something where I've seen people and I kind of see what other people are doing and I say, hey, the link is in the comments does Facebook now recognize what you're writing and like actually not show that post? Are they getting smarter on that? Because I did that recently. It's like, Oh, by the way, cause I'm trying to get away, get around that whole thing. I put in like, and like no engagement. Yeah. Because on your personal profile, they don't want you to be promoting stuff. And when they see a link in your personal profile, it means that you're promoting something, mm. right? You're sending people somewhere. And so they uh, ratchet back your reach. It will reach less people if you have a link in your post on your personal profile. And one way to get around that is in your comments. Okay. I don't know if Facebook has caught on to that yet. Okay. They might have, but that's the idea. Okay. And then is, let's question before we get into the nine steps, because I want to get into the nine steps for sure. Do you, when you teach or you, you're mentoring somebody, do you, do you tell people a certain blend? Cause I, I follow you and I see you have a, a blend of all kinds of stuff. It's it, your kids, your family, what you're passionate about. And then you drip in some business. Do you have a certain formula? Are we going to get yeah, into that? I would, I would say there's a one to 10 ratio. Okay. So for every 10 content or lifestyle posts that you post, one of those can be promotional. And when I say promotional, I don't mean like a, like a total direct ad. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to talk about that. Okay. In fact, I'll explain what a promotional post is a little bit later um, as we go on. But I think the ratio, a good ratio is about one to 10. So you do 10, you know, content, posts or nine content posts. And then the, the, the 10th one is a promotional post for your business. Awesome. Now I want to dive into these nine steps. And the first step, the most important part is creating a special offer. Right. So when you see somebody on Facebook and you see a post that's interesting, one of the very first things that you do is you click into that person's profile and you look to see who they are. That's what people do. Yeah, we are all. natural voyeurs. All humans are natural voyeurs. If that wasn't true, you know, there wouldn't be a lot of reality shows. Reality, the, the explosion of reality shows proves the fact that we are natural voyeurs. We want to look into people's lives. The most important and the most viewed web page on any website is the about page because everybody wants to know who is the person behind this. And so this is a key. When, you, when they click on your name and they go to your personal profile, they look at your header, they start looking around, that is where you can present to them an offer. Now, the reason we're doing this is because you cannot market to somebody that you cannot reach. What, what do I mean by that? Well, 
If you don't have an email address of somebody, how are you going to contact them? If you don't have a cell phone number, how are you going to text them? If, um, you know, the only other way to do that is just to run an ad, you know, just we call it spraying and praying, running an ad to everybody. But that's super expensive. So what you want to do is create an offer that will get people to request whatever it is that offer is. Now you can capture their information. So for instance, um, let me give you some examples. If you're a realtor, um, you can offer a home valuation if you, uh, or a fix-up, a home fix-up checklist. Or you might offer a brochure called Home Selling Secrets or the Home Fix-Up Rolodex. It's a Rolodex of service providers in your local area that do certain things that will help you to fix up your home. Something like that, right? Something that people would want if they were interested in your type of profession, right? So if they're in the, if they're like in the least bit interested about their home or selling their home or buying a home, they would find that the home fix up checklist as they're selling their home would be a valuable thing. Yeah. Well, that is how you capture their lead. So if you're a restaurant, you could give away a free lunch, a free dinner, maybe a free dessert or a dinner movie getaway or, or something like that. Um, if you're a plumber, you can offer different information on how to unclog uh, the drains in your home or um, yeah. if your toilet floods or things like that. Okay. That is an offer. So you need to create some type of offer that you can offer on your personal profile that people would want to um, access. You know, that's, that's really powerful. I can't, I've referred our air conditioning guy so many times and why? Because he taught my wife and I how to eliminate 75% of the visits for uh, air conditioning guys come to your house. He walked us through and he's like, you know, I'm not in the business of this tinkering. Like when I, when your coils need to be cleaned, I'll clean them. I'll come. And that's bigger ticket when it needs to be replaced. I would love your friends and your family's business. And when he prepped and said this stuff, I was so, we saved us so much money. And so like, I think that the questions that people are asking you all the time to come up with like a little checklist like that and give it as a value proposition, like here, I'm just adding value and giving to you. And David, you're always doing that kind of stuff. You're always adding value. Anytime that you buy something little technical or this, oh, by the way, this is a great deal. And I can't tell you how many, by the way, if I click that link and buy it, do you get paid with Amazon or no? Probably not. I hope you do. You've posted so many things. Over oh, the years no. Bought, well, no, on my personal profile, I don't do that. But no, the, I was going to say, I don't even like, but I bought so many things. You're always adding value. And I can't tell right. you how many things I've bought because right. you recommend it. That's right. But the key is, is that you're capturing their contact information. Yeah. Okay. And okay, so you so need a landing page. Imagine for a moment, you had a list of a thousand people, like, like an email list of a thousand people who live right in your local area and you're a plumber. So let's I mean, talk about that. Let's That's talk about goal. step two then. So you need a landing page. So tell me how, what, what do we do? What are the- Well, you need two step? things. Okay. Well, you need three things. You need the offer. Okay. Special you offer. You need some place to send them uh -huh. to get the offer. We call those landing pages. They're, they're basically a web page on the internet. And there's a lot of different tools that you can use to create a landing page. You can use a tool like ClickFunnels. You can use a tool like Unbounce. You can use a tool. You can, um, you can go to Wix.com and mm -hmm. create a one-page landing page. There's a lot of different ways you can create a landing page. And basically, all the landing page is doing is one thing, and that's offering or showing that offer and getting people to, to request that offer. The second thing you need is an autoresponder. An autoresponder is an email uh, sending service. And uh, autoresponders like AWeber, GetResponse, MailChimp, Constant Contact, One Shopping Cart, Office Autopilot, all those um, services offer email autoresponders. The one that I use is ActiveCampaign. I use ActiveCampaign and GetResponse for you know, two different reasons. 
but that is going to allow you to send email newsletters to people in your local area whose email that you capture through the landing page that is showing the offer. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. So you, so the, so step number three, number two is the landing page. Step number three is the autoresponder. And you use what get response you said? I use get response and I use active campaign. Okay. Um, a Weber is a good one. Uh, convert kit is another one. There's a lot of them. So give me an example. So you have, you might, so in your Facebook about page, you might have a special offer where somebody can download something. So if they click a link, it goes to a landing page. They put their information in and then the autoresponder is what you're saying is, so can you tell me about a little bit about the process? The autoresponder allows you, will, will manage those emails so that when you want to send out a message to all those people, you just go into the autoresponder, write a message, push a button, and it'll send it to all those people. The other thing it does is what if you had a um, kind of a, what if, you, what if you wrote a tip a day and you created an email message about that tip, whatever it is, an autoresponder will allow you to set up an auto, well, they call it an autoresponder list. Yeah. You can set up these messages that go out sequentially, automatically to people. So let's say every day for the 30 days, you write a tip, you put it in the autoresponder. That's 30 days worth of tips that when somebody joins or, or requests your offer, they will automatically get those 30 tips fully automated without you even touching it. Wow. Wow. And, you know, step number four, you talk about creating another personal Facebook page. Why is that? Yes, maybe. Okay. So a lot of people don't want to, you know, a lot of people have their personal family members on their Facebook page. They have a lot of other people. Um, I mean, if you've got, what you want to do is max out your 5,000 friends with local people. All right, so Facebook allows you 5,000 friends. Now, it does allow you to go over that, but the connection isn't as close as a friend. They call those followers. Okay. So if someone re does a friend request to me and I don't accept the friend request, they automatically become a follower. And every now and then, Facebook might show them a post from me. If the post goes very popular, then Facebook will go into the follower list and show the followers. Okay, so that's how it works. I hope that makes sense. And maybe this is the next question. And I don't want to go into this too deep. Yeah, but adding local friends. Yeah. Cause that, cause you mentioned that that is, you know, step number five is adding local friends. Yeah, so well, before I talk about adding local friends, I just want to talk a little bit more about your Facebook profile. Okay. So there's a cover photo mm -hmm. for your Facebook profile. This is where you can show your offer. There's a cover photo. That's where you can show your offer. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if you wanted to do this is you're listening to a podcast right now, but you also can go to the video. Did you want to me to show somebody an example? That would be amazing if you could do that. That would be fantastic. Okay, then if you make me the host, then okay. I will show somebody that example. Let me go here. Now you can see this on the screen. Let if me... you're listening to this on a podcast, just take the title and plug it into YouTube and you will find this. Right. So I'm sorry for those of you who are on a podcast, but if you're watching the video, you can see a good example here of a realtor who has changed their Facebook profile cover photo to show them and the offer. And the offer is want to know what your Friendswood home is really worth. Go to free Friendswood home valuation.com. Okay. So when you start making content posts and people that are in the local area come to your Facebook profile, the first thing you want them to see is your offer. Mm. That's right up on the Facebook profile. Does that make sense? And this is their personal, right? This is their personal profile. And Facebook does not have a problem with this. 
as long as you're doing a lot of content. The second thing I want to show them is this, the about page. Okay. On your about page or details about you, this is where you want to write a message that kind of captures their attention. So I have eight different paragraphs on my about page. I talk about what I do. I talk about my family, because remember, that's one of the very first things you want them to know is what you do. I talk about my family. I have a paragraph called, let's be friends. I said, if you live in Friendswood, you have two feet, one nose, two ears, and 11 fingers. The extra one is for nose picking. So I try and, you know, put a little bit of humor in it. I said, send me a friend request so we can get to know each other. I like making local friends. So you're asking them to become your friend if you live locally. I talk about where I live and I actually give my address. Like who cares if they know where I live? We're all local, right? I tell them to contact me. I even give them my cell phone number for heaven's sakes. And then if I was a realtor, I would talk about your home value because that is where I'd send them to the offer. I'll read this to you. Let's say you're a realtor. Your home value. If you want to really know how much your home is worth, in parentheses, don't believe those online services. Even if you're not planning on selling your home or just for sh shizzles and giggles, go to freefriendswithhomevaluation.com, okay? I am sending them to my offer so I can capture their contact information. And then I say, get the checklist. Well, I've got another landing page with a, with a checklist on it. And I, I promote that little checklist in that paragraph. And then I say, welcome. I give you my humblest welcome to my Facebook homepage. I post all kinds of cool stuff on here about Friendswood and other local things. If you live here in Friendswood, send me a friend request so that we can connect. And thanks for reading down this far. You are a three percenter. 97% of the people stopped reading after paragraph number one. Okay. So a little bit of humor. That's what I would do for my, um, for setting up my personal profile. That's very, very important because that's how you are going to show them the offer and generate the lead. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, uh, geez, it's so many different possibilities there, not just real estate. You pick one that's obviously uh, one that's very visible and people that are out there all the time. Let me show one more thing, Curtis. Yeah. There is another section of your Facebook profile where you can actually put the links in to your, uh, your offers. So here's a good example. Again, I stay with the, the real estate guy. So here's all the links to loweryourfriendswoodpropertytax.com, freefriendswoodhomesellingsecrets.com, freefriendswoodhomefixuprolodex.com, freefriendswoodhomefixupchecklist.com, freefriendswoodhomevaluation.com. Why do I put so many? You don't, and it sounds like a lot of work. You can do, you know, maybe one every six months, whatever. The reason I do that is because they might be interested in one and not interested in the other. Mm. Right. And so you want to give them many points of entry into your world. And I, those URLs are fairly long. Is there a reason why you did that? Does that help with the search engines? If somebody happens? No, to just no. Um, because I'm sending them there via a link, it really doesn't matter how long they are. The okay. key is that I put the, 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 I put my city's name into the URL. Got it. There's just something about that. That's like, you know, when you're looking for a yellow VW to, to, um, to buy, you've never seen a yellow VW, but the moment you said in your mind, well, I want to buy a yellow VW, you start seeing yellow VWs. That's called your reticular activator. And, and so that happens when someone sees that their hometown name where they live, it automatically draws their attention to that. I always put it in the link of the URL. Okay. Awesome person. So you're not, it's not, that has nothing to do with somebody actually going to Google and searching and trying to find. Well, it might show up. It might. Okay. Yeah. That's not the main reason. Gotcha. So thank you for sharing those profiles. That's and anything that you want to share by all means, you know, pull up a slide. That's great. And now let's talk about adding, because that's another step here, adding local friends. What's some little secrets that you have for making that happen? Okay. 
So when you add your local friends, um, it's really good to try and add as many local friends as you can because they will be your base followers, I guess you want to say, your base group of friends. And when they like your stuff, they have people that are attached to them in their local area. <clears throat> and so other local people are going to see your stuff. So you want to start out with all the people you know locally. And how do you do that? Well, I use this thing called the memory jogger. And you can go on to Google and type in memory jogger, and you're going to get all kinds of memory joggers, right? They're all over the place. But a memory jogger will just ask you questions and help you to come up with names of people that you know. Um, who are your immediate family members that live locally? Who are your spouse's relatives that live locally? Who, who's your doctor that lives locally? Who's your parents' friends or your mm. friends of your parents that live locally? Who is it that you went to school with locally? Who's your local dentist? Um, who's your local babysitter? Who's your local uh, person who cuts your hair? Who is your local kids' teachers? Um, who is all the members of your local church that you attend? Who are your neighbors? Who sold your car? Who are parents of your teammates? Who met you at a party? Who delivers your mail? Who works at the grocery store? Okay, on and on. You don't want to friend more than about 20 to 30 people a day because friends would, does, uh, excuse me, uh, Facebook does not like that. So I would probably keep it to about 20 people, but make a list of all these people. And I would also um, just, you know, send them a little message and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm starting a Facebook page and um, I, you know, I wanted to send you a friend request so that we can be connected on Facebook. All right. And uh, that will increase your opportunity for doing that. Now, I'm also going to call, uh, talk about Dream 100 Influencers, all right? Uh, Curtis, explain what the Dream 100 is. First time I ever heard about this was through Russell Brunson. However, I didn't know it was a part of like your inner circle is like inner that marketing world. Well, it's like, well, the way he explained it was make a list of all the people that, that you, that either influencers in that certain specific niche that could potentially be referral business, right? Some people that have huge networks that you might want to tap into. Um, so there's so a who lot might of that different... be locally. Let's come up with a couple names. Who would be influential people locally that you want to be friends with on Facebook? Well, look at what business am I in real estate? Yeah. Or it could be any business, right? So yeah. people that, that might have, I, like, I yeah, it say. would be any, just think any business. Who are the influential people in local cities? Well, I know that there's some, some doctors or some uh, attorneys. Um, there's also some accountants that I know that have big Rolodexes and book of businesses that could be a never ending source of referrals mm -hmm. for you. Um, maybe local business owners, like a restaurant owner uh, that comes mm -hmm. to mind. Heck, even like a hairdresser that is talking to people every day, all day, they could be a dream 100 for me. Pastors. Oh, true. Um, you they know, they know. know a lot of people. And, um, and then just go into a local Facebook group and boy, now you have a lot of local people. Again, I wouldn't just start friend requesting them right away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I might, you know, comment on one of their posts or something like that so that they see my name before they see the friend request. They see my name somewhere before they see the friend request. This is not a race. This is not a 100, 100 yard sprint. This is a marathon. You're building a business in your local area for years. And so take it easy. Do it the right way. Don't be a spammer, right? Um, but you want to you wanna start building a list of local people. Okay. List of local people. Now, yes, you could. if I said 20 a day, that's 600 a month, then I can hit my 5,000 in X amount of days. Like that's the wrong mindset is what you're saying. That's right. Okay. So then more quality. I, I think that's very clever. Comment, like a couple of posts here and there. Remember and your best you... friends are the ones that sent a friend request to you who live locally, right? They're incoming. They want to be your friend. That's great. Yes, that's great. And now you also, now once you're starting to build this list, what do I post? What kind of content would somebody be? That's you know step number six. Okay. So... Before I go into that, I just want to start off by, by the two immortal rules of Facebook engagement. Okay. 
And it's timely because today we are recording this on the day that America decides who will be the president of the United States. And um, there have been a ton of political posts on Facebook here in the United States, and they have gotten wickedly ugly. Mm. So rule number one, never post political stuff. Don't post political stuff. Remember, you're using this particular profile for your business. Yeah. The moment you start posting political stuff and you're a Republican, it turns away all the Democrats. And, and the moment you start doing just, you know, the opposite, you start promoting Democrats, all the Republicans are going to hate you. It's just, that's the way our country is going. It's like divided down to two. If you're Republican and I'm a Democrat, it automatically puts this barrier there that you unnecessarily have to overcome. Okay. I'm also going to go say, I'm going to say, go light on the religious stuff. <clears throat> if you, if religion is a part of your life and you know, that's how it is with me, I am, my life revolves around my religious beliefs and my religion. And so I do post some religious stuff, but it ain't every post, right? I spread them out. I sprinkle them out. I don't make them so heavy. On the other hand, if all you want to do is attract uh, people from your religion, then go ahead and go heavy with it. But I don't suggest that. Rule number two. Okay, listen to me when I tell you this. You, Those of you who are on a podcast, stop what you're doing right now and listen to me. This rule a friend taught me years ago that has given me or brought me great peace of mind while I've been on Facebook. I used to go around disagreeing with everybody because that is our natural human instinct. We are defensive by nature. Genetically speaking, we were born to disagree with people because that is our instinct. Never disagree with anyone on their post. Never go over to someone else's post and post a comment disagreeing with them. If you feel so strongly about against what they're saying, you know, come over to your, your profile and post it. But remember, this is a business. You using this for a business. Don't make enemies. We're not in the business of making enemies. We're in the business of making friends. So never disagree with people on their posts. Never. Just don't do it. Keep scrolling. Those are the two immortal rules. Great friends okay. and friends would. <clears throat> so how do you build a following of local people that know you, like you, and trust you? By creating super engaging local content. And uh, so we're going to go fast through this. I'm going to give you some rules, and then we're going to go through a lot of ideas. Okay? Four rules for posting content. Here we go. For those of you who are on video, I'm going to show you the rules. Rule number one, post photos of your real life. Let them peek into your world. Again, we're all voyeurs. Let them get to know you as a real person. Post your family, post yourself out at restaurants, and just your lifestyle. Rule number two, post local stuff, rarely national. Post funny, heartwarming, shocking, interesting, valuable stuff about your local city. Build a culture for your personal profile that when your friends want to know what's going on locally, they go to your profile. That is your target market. That's what this particular podcast is about. I'm sure that Curtis does other podcasts about how to get referrals from people that live on the other side of the world. This is specifically for people who live in your local area. Rule number three, sprinkle in indirect promotional business stuff. Again, ratio one to 10. Rule number four, limit your posts to no more than five per day. I think five per day is a lot. Like mm-hmm. I would I post maybe three times a day and that's enough. Okay. And remember that uh, if you post so much, Facebook will out- actually put you in Facebook jail, that's what we call it. If you're posting too much, I've seen it happen. So maybe about three posts a day is fine. So now I am going to give you 20 unique ideas for creating engaging local content. Here we go. Get your pens out, your pencils out. This is so uh, awesome. Because 
they're going to come at you pretty quickly. Okay. Idea number one, local feel good stories. So bookmark local TV station websites, local newspaper websites, anywhere you can find local feel good stories and share those local feel good stories. People who live locally will want to share the local stories. I, I promise you they will become your most popular posts because you are sharing local things that have happened that are really feel good. Number two, lo uh, local youth sports achievements. Get out of your house, go out to the local football games here in Texas, football rules. Friday night lights is true. When you're down here in Texas, the whole town goes out to the local high school football game. So take a nice camera out there and start shooting some photos or go to the local uh, newspaper website and take a screenshot of who won last night. Start a conversation about the football team. People will like to interact with local youth sports achievements. Number three, local history photos, <clears throat> local historical photos. Now, for those of you who are watching this on video, I'm showing an actual photo of my dad's gas station in 1972 in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I was in a local Facebook group and someone posted this photo and I'm like, holy heck, that's my dad's gas station. I grew up in that gas station. Since I was like eight years old, I was pumping gas in that gas station. And so now I go back to that Facebook group all the time. So go find local historical photos. You can do that right down at the public library. There are books that are probably published where you can find local photos. Go to other Facebook groups for your local town that might show local photos. Number four, photos of local events. Go to a lot of local events and start taking photos. For those of you who are on video, here is a picture of me at the, um, I believe this is Veterans Day. Every year they have down at the park, they ask all the veterans to come up and um, I'm in that picture. And if you post that locally on your, on your personal profile, that is going to, especially, you know, a photo like that where it's showing a lot of veterans, man, that's going to get, that's going to go viral. Uh, funny local signs. Okay. These go viral a lot. So go around your local city and you will, you will find some places that have these signs out front that, that post funny things. Okay. So for those of you on video, I'm looking at a sign that says the first five days after the weekend are the hardest. Okay. <laughs> In other words, the whole week, you know, Monday through Friday sucks, but the weekend's awesome. <laughs> so that's kind of funny, right? And then you, you tell people where it's, where you took the photo at and they go, yeah, I passed by that too. That is so funny, right? You can actually go online. There are places online that you can go to where you can type in a message onto a sign and it will show up j exactly as though it looks like it's on a real sign in your local area. And uh, you can post that. So uh, number six, reviews of books and websites about your local city. There are undoubtedly books that were published about your local city. Go into your local library, find them, go to Amazon, find them, order them, take a photo of that and post that on, on Facebook. <clears throat> Local historical facts and stories. Now, this one's really good. You're going to find these somewhere, somewhere at the local library, maybe down at your local courthouse, but there will be some books that will tell about stories about your local area that you can put on there. And people love, they're just fascinated with that stuff. Number eight, do a local store walkthrough video. OK, so go into a local store and just ask the manager and say, hey, you know, I want to do a local store uh, walkthrough with my camera and I'm only going to say positive things. So don't worry. I'm just, you know, I like posting stuff on Facebook to promote local businesses. And the manager is going to say, yeah, why not? Go ahead. And so you walk through the store and you show people what they got in that store. I promise you. This will attract local people to your Facebook profile because they want to see what's inside their stores. And most of the people that will come there, 
And, and also, by the way, you can take this post and you can put it in a Facebook group, right? And, and people will, that will drive people back to your profile, but you will get tons of conversation. Always make it positive. There will be a lot of conversations when you do this. Number nine, people of, okay, have you guys ever been to the Facebook uh, webpage, the Facebook page called People of New York? Man, you got to go to this webpage called People of New York. Actually, it's called Humans nine, of New York. Humans of New York. Go to facebook.com friends slash H-O-N-Y, the series, Humans of New York, the series. And what they do is they just stop people and interview them about, you know, some particular interesting part of their life. And they write that up in a story. They take about five photos of the person and they post it. That page has 18 million followers. Why? Because we're all voyeurs. We want to look into the lives. And if it's, the, if we're looking into the life of a local citizen in your local area, all the more interesting, you're going to have people to say, I know that person. Yes, I know. That's my neighbor. That will get a lot of people coming to your local fo- uh, Facebook profile. Local restaurant reviews. Now these go nuts, people, <clears throat> because most of the people in your local town have gone to these restaurants. Always do a positive review of a local restaurant. If you, if you go in there and you don't have any good thing to say about the restaurant, then do not do it, okay? Don't say anything about it. We're not there to make enemies. We're there to make friends. So go into local restaurants, take a photo of what you ate, say something positive about the restaurant, post it on your personal profile. <clears throat> take where am I photos. So what, um, what you can do is you can go to a website called Zazzle, Z-A-Z-Z-L-E.com. And you can make a t-shirt with the name of your local city on it. You put that t-shirt on, it costs probably about 35 bucks. You put that t-shirt on and go into local spots in your neighborhood and ask people to identify where you're at. These are always a lot of fun and a lot of fun to do as well. Number 12, popular viral videos. Okay, so every now and then you want to post a video that is known to be viral. So go to dailypicksandflicks.com, snag a, a viral video from there, post it on your personal profile. If it went viral nationally or globally, it's going to go viral locally on your personal profile. Number 13, Local how do I videos. So a lot of people want to know how to do things in your local city. So for instance, how do you get a driver's license? Well, why don't you make a video of exactly all the steps you took to get your driver's license? So, you know, here is the, the driver's vehicle. What do they even call those places? DMV. DMV. Okay. Right. Here's your local DMV. This is the one I go to. It's on highway three. So you, lo- you show a video going into it and talking to the person at the, at the desk, you take pictures in there, you know, maybe some, make some people uncomfortable, but go ahead and do it. And then make a little video about it on how you, how you did you, you renewed your license. And there's a lot of things um, like, for instance, how do I challenge my property tax appraisal? I could do a video about that. How do I vote? How do I rent a pavilion at a local park? How do I found that, find out about summer activities that the city offers? How do I rent a mailbox for a home business? These are simple videos you can do that people will very, be very interested in and they'll get shared to other local people. Number 14, my favorite business videos. Go to your favorite business, right? And shoot a, a simple video or snap a selfie in front of that business and say something awesome about that or go get a, a photo of you and the manager. Number 15, who is my favorite business professional? So if you go to a local doctor, if you go to a local chiropractor, if you go to a local dentist, okay, take a photo of you and that person and put a, um, <clears throat> a recommendation for that local business professional. It could be a pool care provider, a financial planner, a carpet cleaner, lawn care, handyman, whatever it is. 
you can, uh, and for, like for me, I do have someone who comes and mows my lawn. Um, I do have a carpet cleaner that comes. I should have a pool care provider. I probably should have done that, but I was too stupid. I do in my own pool and I wish I didn't. Um, but those types of things, you can take photos of them and then make recommendations of them. Fun local memes. Go to tooneytool.com, T-O-O-N-Y-T-O-O-L.com and upload photos of your local area. If you're watching on video, I'm showing one that I made of local Friendswood police cars. And I have a little guy on there saying, if you love our police, give them a shout out. You will get a ton of engagement on that post from local people. Um, local police reports. All right. Everybody wants to know. Remember, we're voyeurs. We always want and we always want to know the seedy stuff. You know, we want to know all the ooh, what's what's bad that's going on. I don't know why. I wish we weren't like that, but we are as humans. And so go um, you can go to local websites that will show you um, police reports, right? With photos and everything. You can go to your local online, was it newspaper publication? And there's a ton of them on there. Number 18, announce local events. All you got to do is go to Google, type in the name of your local city plus the word events. And Google has a little function that's specific for this. It will come up and show you all the events in your local area. Then you take a screenshot of that, you post it, and you show all the local events coming up. People will love you for that. Number 19, lo local city informational posts. All right. Every city has its website. And you would be amazed at all the information you will find on that website that's pertinent to your local city. Let me, uh, let me give you just an example. Okay. Again, I live in Friendswood. This is some of the information you can get off of my local website how to get a Friendswood construction permit before you make alterations on your home, how to report a local Friendswood code violation when you see it. Do you have a junk vehicle that is in danger of getting towed? If you live in Friendswood and have a pool, there are pool restrictions and there are pool guidelines. Um, want to work for the city of Friendswood? You show them the information about how you can get a job with the city of Friendswood. <clears throat> Here's how your teenager can get a summer job working in the city Friendswood. There are play, there's a place on the city website that talks exactly about that. You want to volunteer for the city of Friendswood? Here's how you do that. Uh, do you believe your Friendswood fair housing rights have been violated? That's where you go for that. Want to sit Friendswood city representative to attend your homeowners association meeting? All kinds of information that is local to your city will be on that website that nobody knows about that they might find very interesting. So go to your local city website and, un and dig up some of that information and post it on your local profile. Number 20, be a source for local news. Again, all you have to do is type in the name of your local city in Google and, and click on the link that says news. And you're going to come up with a bunch of news articles about your local city. You can post those things and people want to know about them. Okay. Curtis. Yeah. I'm almost done, but I want to get to the really good part. Remember I told you that every one in every 10 posts should be um, promotional. promotional. Yes. Okay. And I told your listeners that I was going to teach them how to do that. Yes. Okay. Now, now I'm going to do that right now. Okay. okay? Awesome. So everything, all the 20 ideas I just gave you is just content, just fun local content that people are going to share locally. That's going to get a lot of people to know you, like you and trust you, but you haven't talked about your business yet other than setting up your local profile to generate leads for your local business. But now I'm going to share with you how to promote locally from that profile. So I'm going to give you 10, 10 different ideas. Okay. So um, again, you don't want to do blatant pitches, but you do want to develop some creative, unusual, funny, persuasive, and powerful posts that help you to promote your local business. Okay. 
So number one, funny Fiverr videos. Okay. Remember, people want to be entertained. I mean, that's just the fact. First and foremost, people want to laugh. And when you get somebody to laugh, that will go more to getting them to like you than providing some hardcore, awesome information. I mean, that's, it's just the truth. So you want to get them to laugh. Go to fiverr.com front slash puppet pals, P-U-P-P-E-T-P-A-L-S. You can send them a photo of your local business and they will create like a Sesame Street puppet. And you can tell that puppet whatever it wants to say. So you send a script in and for 10 bucks, they'll do a video of a local puppet in front of your local business saying whatever you want or 20 bucks. I think it's 20 bucks. Okay. And then, and people are going to go, wow, how did you even do that? And they'll laugh. So funny Fiverr videos. Now customer stories, people love a good story and you can tell your followers what you do through a customer's story. Okay. And this is how you want to write out the story. You use the problem solution results formula. Problem, solution, the PSR formula. Problem, solution, results formula. Number one, you state what problem your customer was having. Number two, why they selected you. And number three, what are the results of them doing now that they've done business with you? Okay. That is a customer story. You get their permission before you do a customer story. Or you might send them the customer story after you've written it up and just ask them, is it okay if I use this with a photo of you? Would that be okay? Basically, you're getting a referral from them, but proactively, right? You're writing your own referral, <laughs> basically, when you do this. And a lot of people who are very uh, satisfied with your services will say, sure, go ahead, use that. People want to help people. People want to stop on the side of the road and help people, okay? Just remember that. People always want to help people. Your customers want to help you. Number three, do a time-lapse customer video. So ask the customer if you can take a time-lapse video of you performing your service. Like if you're mowing the lawn, you're doing dentistry work, whatever, whatever you're doing with your customer, you can do like a time-lapse video of you in action doing that even if they're sitting down at a desk with you, like you could show kind of what's on the computer. If it's not, you know, too private, you can show um, you sitting and talking with that customer, you know, greeting them at the door, saying goodbye to them. It's just a video showing you and your customer and what you do. Okay. Number four, before and after customer photos, <clears throat> before and after photos are super powerful, but you say, what if I just have a business that is not, you know, not like a weight loss business. For instance, my chiropractor, how could I do a before and after photo with my chiropractor? You could just take a photo of your customer frowning and smiling, <laughs> really, and make it before and after, right? It does not have to be. And then you just tell their story. Hey, before Jenny came in, she was having these terrible back spasms. She's a young mother. She started to get really painful back spasms after picking up her baby so much. Two weeks later, she can't even feel the painting, right? And then you do a quote from Jenny. So it can be as simple as that. Number five, do Facebook Lives. You know what a Facebook Live is? A Facebook Live is you going live on your Facebook profile and um, talking to people right? And you can do that right with your smartphone. You can press a button and go live on Facebook. So what you want to do is come up with a list of questions, common questions that people have for what you do as a business in your business. And you can just do like one question at a time. Hey, today I'm going to tackle this question. And you do a Facebook live explaining that question. And that Facebook live can be, you know, no less than, I don't know, maybe two to five minutes, maybe six minutes, maybe even 10 minutes. If it's a deeper subject, you can go longer than that, but you can do Facebook lives about answering questions about your business. You can do demo videos, which is just a different version of doing the, the time-lapse customer video. It's just a different 
different version of that. Doing demo videos just shows a different process of what people go through when they are doing business with you. Uh, behind the scenes videos, these are really good. If you're a local business owner, you can take them right into your office and show them, hey, here's Debbie. She does this. And Debbie says hi and do some. And then you can show them the other. You can take them out to your warehouse. You can show them, do a behind the scenes. What happens behind the scenes? And it can be an interview with you. Someone could be interviewing you. Uh, you can just do regular question and answer videos. And uh, this is this is something that I I absolutely 100% suggest that you should start with. Just do a Q&A video that you just upload. So instead of doing a Facebook Live, just do a video and, and upload it. And it's a question, you're answering a question, a common question that people have. You can do giveaway uh, posts. Remember I told you to create these types of offers, right? You can make a post offering that offer. So if you have a fix-up checklist and you're a realtor, you can post that checklist right on your personal profile, all right? And just ask them, just say, hey, go to my personal profile or go to this URL and go get this checklist. And you're starting to build a list from that. Uh, you can do what I call a 10 tips post. People love to learn helpful tips. So you can create these tips posts that add value, build trust, position yourself as a local authority in whatever you're doing. So again, let's stay with Realtor. So here's some of the different uh, types of business-oriented tips posts you can do. So maybe you have a, a home selling tip, a home, a home organizational tip, a home cleaning tip, a pet proofing tip, a maintenance tip, a home decor tip, how to have a peaceful home, um, how to reduce your dust, your toxic chemicals in your home, storm proofing tips, decluttering tips, energy saving tips. There's a lot of tips that you can give in your business that you can post on your local profile. Okay, who I've been talking a lot, Curtis, but this I hope is that's so valuable. valuable. I'm sure that people are going to have to go back and make sure that they're taking notes and stuff because if somebody follows this, I can see the power really fast <laughs> of what could, you could grow something really fast and quick. And, and it sounds, sounds difficult. It's not that difficult. It, like seriously, it, I mean, those people who are on Facebook every day, how hard is that? Right. And they're just being intentional and just be, right. it sounds like to me that just to be intentional and in what you're doing right here is giving us ways to plan it out. Right. Exactly. So it's not always like, what am I doing? The word tomorrow? intentional. The word intentional is exactly what I was going to say. You took the words out of my mouth. Just be intentional about what you're going to post. Okay. I want to give something a little bit extra. I don't, I hope we're not going over time. It's 12. No, this is great. And people that are going to listen are going to listen. <laughs> okay. So I want to give you five ways to use your personal Facebook profile to get a super fast influx of local customers. Okay. <laughs> Method number one to get a fast influx of local customers, do a refer a friend method, okay? So ask a friend to refer you to their Facebook friends. Ask friends to refer you to their Facebook friends. So what you do is you just, you know, send them, send your friends a local private message and you say, hey, um, you've done business with me. Would you be willing to uh, refer me to your Facebook friends. And if they say yes, then you send them what they should post. Don't make it hard for them. Send them maybe a photo of you and the text and just say, hey, I just wanted to make it easy for you. You can edit this any way you want. If you don't want to say any of this, great. Rewrite it all. But I just wanted to make it easy for you. And then they go and post it. Now that is powerful because when this is where referrals happen on Facebook, you can ask them to do it. Um, share a post method. You create a um, client case study, you post it, and then you private message a bunch of friends and say, hey, I just did a post um, about a client, a, a case study of one of my clients. Um, I know that you're super busy. And if you don't want to do this, or you feel uncomfortable doing this, that is a-okay. It's no problem at all. But here is a post. Would you help me out? Would you give me a help and just, you know, share that on your personal profile? Again, people want to help you. 
They would be more than happy to help you if they had a good experience with you. How about this one? Can I use your Facebook profile? Okay, I've watched this in action and it's amazing. I did not think it was going to work, but I was blown away. All right. A friend of mine named Christopher Jones, he is in MLM and, and that's network marketing. And some of you have a very good experience with network marketing. Some of you not so good of experience with network marketing. But he, had, he was in a network marketing company called Nerium. And this is what he posted. I'm going to read it to you word for word for those of you who are on the podcast. This is what his post said. To my family, friends, and associates who are not involved in Nerium, all in capital letters. And then in lowercase letters, he says this. If you owned a restaurant, I'd promote it. If you owned a gym, I'd visit and get a great workout in. If you made organic juice in a juice bar, I'd drink it and share. I'm a business owner working on helping others to change their lives, and I need your help. With your permission, I would like to make one Nerium post on your wall to help me expand my global business. I have a big goal, and you can help me to reach that goal. You may not be interested in Nerium, but your friends and family may be. My goal is to reach out to as many people as possible to offer youthful skin, healthier brain, and to live the life of their dreams. If you would allow me to post on your wall, please comment yes in the comments. Thank you for your continued support on my in my business. I appreciate you. Oh my gosh. I, I didn't put a picture of the results, but this guy had, I counted them, over 35 of his friends say, yes, you can do that. Can you imagine that? 35 referrals. And, and who are they referring? They're re, you know, on Facebook, you could have hundreds of friends. and may, Let's say it shows it to a 30% of your friends. Can you imagine how powerful that is? Unbelievable. Wow. I love I was, this. Curtis, I was blown away because like a lot of people <laughs> don't like network marketing, but all their friends said, yeah, people want to help people. How many times have I said that? That's all a very direct ask. post. Usually it's very indirect. And like, I right. like that approach. <laughs> Right. It's totally out in the open. I'm like, it's gutsy for you to do that. But it was amazing the response this guy got. Okay. Number four, I call this the team 12 referral group method. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, but in the long run, it will probably bring you the most referrals. So for this method, you want to find 12 other local professionals who use Facebook a lot, have a large local following, and that have a stellar reputation. You ask them to join your quote unquote team 12 referral group and you explain how it works. So then you ask all of the 12 participants to refer another professional in the group on Facebook profile on, on their Facebook profile. So you set up a system for who refers who and when, okay, how does this work? You, if you're a realtor, you go find um, 11 other people who are not in your niche. Okay that have complimentary customers. You ask them, would you be willing to refer one of the people in our team 12 every month on your Facebook profile? And if they say yes, boom, they're a part of the team. You build it up to 12 because it's 12 months. So every month, someone is promoting you to their audience and you are promoting somebody else to their audience. And it just works, you know, you create a schedule and these, and you, every month you're going to get a referral from a trusted professional to your business. Oh, that's a whole product in itself right there. Like what you're just talking about, that's a whole, that's, we could talk a lot about that. And what, what is I BNI? Love that. What is BNI? Business Networking International, exactly. Exclusive one per industry. Right. It's a referral group, right? Uh, exclusive industries. You're just taking online. this online. They do that in person. Okay. That's good. But imagine taking it online where hundreds of people are seeing your post. It makes it way more powerful. I don't even know why they don't do that. They should do that. Maybe they are doing that. I don't know. Um, number five, the viral deal method. Okay. So you come up with a real awesome deal for your business. 
man, if you're an insurance agent, it could be an insurance, I don't know, come up with an offer that is a, a, just a crazy, really good offer. And because people love to share great deals with their friends, especially if they're local deals. So create a deal so good that friends can't help but share it. And then have it, you know, okay, let's say insurance professional, maybe it's just a booklet, right? I don't know. And, and maybe, you know, you compensate somehow, maybe not financially, but the people that, that, uh, that share it. And you post that and you ask people to share that deal with their friends. Um, that is a very simple way. Those, are, those five ways will help you to get um, referred customers very quickly. You mind pulling up that one slide again? What was that the the that tipped off those five tips? What was the slide inbound or influx? Yeah, this one right here. I want to see that. This one? Yeah. For a friend? No, right before that. Yeah. Okay. I just want to see what you said to kick this off because this is because I read it and then now I understand it. <laughs> right. Okay. I want to go back and see that. That is. This is awesome stuff. Like you can get a very quick, super fast influx of local customers doing this. You don't want to do them too often, right? Remember one out of 10, the ratio? Right, right. <clears throat> but when you do it, you will get your phone ringing pretty quickly. And, it, and now we'll go on to the next step, which is systematizing that process. I always say willpower is for losers, systems are for winners, right? Because if you just leave it up to willpower, it ain't going to happen. So... Put strict time limits on, on how much time you will spend on Facebook. I say 15 minutes on your post and then 45 minutes engaging and adding friends. And that's it. Get off. One hour. Be super strict about that. Do not get sucked into the Facebook black hole. You're there focused for a purpose. 15 minutes on your post, 45 minutes engaging and adding friends. When and you know, with your smartphone, you can create a timer. When that timer goes off, boom, you're out. You spent your hour on Facebook for that day. Uh, plan out your local content, <clears throat> have fun making it. You know, write out, okay, today I'm going to do a feel good story. Local signs is on Tuesday. How do I do something on Wednesday? Police reports on Thursday, old photos on Friday, and you just create a schedule right? Take time in your business. You know, the difference between successful small businesses and those that fail are the one, the successful small businesses actually have a plan for growth. You'd be surprised. Most small businesses have no plan for growth. They have no referral plan. Like Curtis, what is the most important thing in your business? This is a Maybe I shouldn't put you on the spot, but the most important thing in your business is getting customers. Customers, well, customers, yes. And how you to get the customers and, and referrals are the least right expensive. So the way. number one thing is to get customers. That's the most important. You can have the greatest yeah. service in the world. You don't get customers, then you're not going to be successful. I went touring around doing referral seminars, and I would always do this. I I would ask, how many of you? business owners here today ha, uh, have referrals as the number one way that you get new business. And over 90% every single time would raise their hands. So what does that mean? Is that pretty much almost every small local business gets their new customers by way of referral. And so I'm like, if that's, the, if, if that's the case, if getting customers is the most important part of your business and referral marketing is the number one way to get those customers, what is the most important activity in your business? Referral marketing, right? It stands a reason, referral marketing. And then I say, how many of you have a written referral plan? Please raise your hand. Like two out of a hundred. Can you see the irony in that? Big time. Isn't that kind of crazy? The most important activity they can be doing. How many of you have hired somebody that is dedicated to just getting referrals? A part-time person that is just dedicated to your referral marketing activities. How many of you have one? Oh, oh, raise your hand. Nobody. 
Like the most important position in your business is a referral marketing manager and you don't got one. Okay. I know there's a lot of caveats to that, but the, the concept is still the same, right? So all this stuff I'm talking about, you're going to go, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. It is really, once you start doing it, it's not that hard. Like taking pictures or having, doing case studies and doing store walkthroughs or restaurant reviews. You, what you do is you integrate it into your lifestyle. You create the content as you are living your life. And that is not hard. So anyways, I got, let me get off my, my soapbox for a moment because listen, this is how you are successful in business. <clears throat> then I would say create a little library of, of promotional content like customer stories, time-lapse videos, before and after posts, uh, Facebook live demo videos, Q and a videos, giveaways, tips, posts, stuff like that. Create a little library of those so that you can, you know, maybe six months later, you can post them again. And uh, I would also create a testimonial page of client videos on your landing page. So one of the pages on your landing page should be a bunch of testimonials from people. You can also use scheduling software like Buffer and SmarterQ. I like SmarterQ. It's a great little uh, product. Buffer is a great product. It helps you to schedule all your posts. So you can literally schedule all your posts, you know, two, three, a month in, in advance and have it go out automatically. Get your team involved in this. Have them take photos. Have them do restaurant reviews. Okay? Great idea. And then they enjoy doing that leverage too. That's good. Okay. We got two more steps. And when yeah, we're so in step number eight, you talk about expanding offline. What do you mean by expanding offline? Okay. Remember how I said that you can never replace your relationships <clears throat> online with face to face. Mm -hmm. You can never replace. Anyways, the most important relationships you'll have are the ones you've had face to face. Yes. Right. They'll always be the most effective. So what you want to do is take your online presence, if you will, and bring it offline. So start getting to know the people offline. So what you can do is start now. This is super powerful, you guys, like mega powerful. Start your own local networking meetup right from your Facebook profile. Start your own networking group. And networking groups can come in a lot of different shapes and forms. Uh, you can have a large networking group that's very systematized. You can uh, start a business lunch group that's a networking group. Uh, you can, um, people always have to go. So what I used to do, this is true, Curtis. What I used to do is I would find a local restaurant that has a buffet and the back room, a buffet and a back room, a buffet because people just go in through the line, get their food. You don't got to take orders. You don't got to sit around the table. How much is yours at the end? You know, all that stuff, right? You've been in that situation. They're like, Ugh, I hate that. <clears throat> Plus you're waiting for the meal and you go to a buffet and you find a buffet that has a room that you can meet in. And you say like, you know, maybe one Thursday, one Friday a month, you're going to do a business lunch group and you invite people to come and be a part of that. And they go through the buffet, they go back into the, into the group. We did one and we had, we were able to sit about 70 people in that, in that, um, in that room and the restaurant loved it. They would always save it for us because I filled the house every time. Um, but business lunch groups, you can also do joint venture seminars. You know, this, one of the most powerful things you can have is a local email list, uh, email list of people who live locally, because with the push of a button, you can get customers without any advertising dollars at all. But a joint venture seminar is, let's say you're a professional and you wanted to educate a bunch of people about what you do and stuff like that. Okay. Let's say again, you're a realtor. So if you're a realtor, go to a local accountant and say, hey, let's do a seminar for local people. And then you go to a financial planner and you say, hey, let's do a seminar for local people. All three of you are now sponsoring that local seminar. Each one of you are advertising locally for that seminar. 
they all come and each one of you get an opportunity to present to that group. This, so this allows you to get into face-to-face a uh, relationship with these people and get to know them. A lot of them will come that were following you on Facebook and you are like a local celebrity. It's amazing how that works. Um, I won't go into a story, but it's amazing how that works. If they know you on Facebook and you got a lot of followers and then they see you locally, you're like, like a celebrity to them. It's, it's a, uh, it's amazing thing. Um, do local volunteering for charity groups. All right. So get 10 people that, you know, uh, I do a, um, I do a, I go up and make peanut butter in a peanut butter factory here in Houston. My church owns it and, um, they distribute that peanut butter throughout the nation, uh, for charity. Wow. And so I invite my friends to come and, you know, I ask them, have you ever worked in a peanut butter factory? will come and work in a peanut butter factory for four hours with me on a volunteer basis. All the peanut butter is going to be given to charity. <clears throat> and I have had some of the coolest experiences doing that. That's so neat. Yeah. So anyways, Facebook is the most powerful referral engine ever created since the dawn of time. Like I am convinced you can generate more referrals for your local business using Facebook than anything else you can do. The key is to build a lead generating Facebook profile to build a list of email newsletter subscribers and then start sending a newsletter to those people. And what do you put in the newsletter? You just be you and you can talk about you personally. People love to know about your personal life. It doesn't always have to be business tips. Number two, create engaging content that makes people laugh, cry, think, be informed and get inspired. Make your content interesting. Number three, strategically send and receive friend requests only from people who live locally. Number four, sprinkle in soft promotional business posts. And number five, meet people offline to deepen relationships. What's the old Zig Ziglar quote, Curtis? <laughs> you get everything in life that you want as long as you help up enough other people get what they want. And that's exactly what the strategy is all about. We're doing using a local Facebook profile is just getting, giving people what they want. They want to be entertained. They want to be informed. They want to be part of a community. They want to be a friend with you. And if you do it and you systematize it, you don't got to be perfect at it, but if you take some time to plan it out and systematize it, uh, you will never, people will be lining up to your business. You will never be at a loss for customers, clients, or patients. I mean, I could just see it. If you wanted to start a local, small brick and order business, it wouldn't be so small in the near future, but I could just see the trajectory. If you were very intentional with your post and doing exactly what you just said, the trajectory would be crazy. I think like, I mean, I just, I see what you're doing here. And I, I'm also envisioning and I'm seeing people that I'm friends with on Facebook doing pieces of this and having massive success. You know, like I, I think that is absolutely powerful. And then you say in step number nine, expand into paid ads. You want to touch yeah, on Yeah, that? if you want to put this whole thing on steroid, do it on a Facebook page and then <clears throat> just put $10 to every one of your um, posts. And you can then also click like friends of friends. And so you're tapping into that next tier, right? And right, so exactly. Simple, easy way. And then, of course, if you want to invest and really understand paid ads at a more extensive level, you can do more. But the hyper local, that's awesome. That's Let me awesome. show you something just to say, yeah. just I'm showing you my my personal profile. Can you see the number of friends that I have? Yeah, you've actually, you probably got rid of a bunch of them, haven't you? I did. <laughs> you had 5,000. <laughs> easy. No, 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 no. I had about 3,400 3, at one time. Okay. But see how many friends I have? How much? Say the number. 2,798. Okay. Now look at how many people follow me. Down hey, over 8,900. So combine those two. Yeah. You have over 10,000, over 11,000. People following me. And do I do anything and like... Facebook.com forward slash D Fry. D Fry. D Fry. And you're going to see that I don't, you know, I just post 
it's not like I'm fan, you know, a lot of people know me. They do. And you know, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm just saying it's not like a lot of people know. If you would back in the 2000s, I was more popular, but nowadays, you know, no one really knows me, but look at all the followers I have because I post good stuff. Yeah, you do. And I love following your stuff and I, it's, it's, it's awesome. And you know, what you're talking about here, one of the biggest things that we talk about in referral secrets and what this podcast is all about. And I so, so appreciate you putting together such an amazing presentation that is so value packed. Like, I mean, there's other uh, podcasts that we have, we talk for an hour and we get pieces and nuggets throughout the thing. This is just jam packed. So really appreciate it. And one, one of the things that we stand out that I talk about when I speak all the time is that it's not what you do that's the most important. It's who you are and how you show up in people's lives. And you don't get a referral, you earn a referral. And so what you're doing here and what you just shared and how you're showing up in people's lives with these different posts and stuff, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to put something together like this because it will help a lot of people, the people that are intentional and actually follow directions. Yeah, and almost <laughs> nobody is doing this, like almost nobody. So any final thoughts as we wrap up and words of advice? Well, more, it's, it's more going back to what I said about, you know, uh, I think it was Michael Gerber says that you need to work on your business, not in your business. Right. So I know that there might be some solo entrepreneurs out there, the small businesses that are still working in their business, meaning they are providing the service that they are, um, that they offer. But the faster you can get to the point where you work, on your business where you're not actually delivering yourself the service that you offer, which frees up your time on growing your business. You can never grow your business. You will never grow your business to where you want it to be unless you get to the point where you're working on your business and not in your business. So everything we're talking about today is working on your business. I just want people to focus on that. Think about that. How can I get to the point where I'm working on my business and not in my business? And what we talked about today, you can just do it as your lifestyle. You know, as you go around town, you can take all kinds of photos and videos as you go around town. You can go to local newspaper websites and just copy it onto your profile because they're not going to the local newspaper website. Mm -hmm. You can just kind of copy right, you know, right onto your profile what they're doing or share their posts right onto your profile. There are so many things that you can do that very, very simply and easily in the course of your day on Facebook to start building a local following. And then you just focus on adding local people as friends and try and just make sure that they've, they're active on Facebook. I don't, if I, if I already added all my friends, I would want to make sure that the person that I'm sending a friend request to is somebody that is active. So I go to their personal profile. I didn't say this before, but I go to their personal profile and I look, did they post in the last week? If they posted something in the last week and you can see that they're posting weekly, <clears throat> they're active on Facebook. That person is looking at Facebook every day. Mm -hmm. That's the type of person that I want to friend request. Wow. I just imagine that's like, it. That's thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I can't wait to get this uh, produced and out there to the world. So thank you for taking the time, David. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Curtis. And uh, man, we've known each other for a long time and I really appreciate and value our friendship. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey there, it's Curtis again. If you have not downloaded the seven most powerful referral secrets, hop on over to referralsecrets.com. It's free. That's simply referralsecrets.com. Also, we give away prizes every week to our subscribers. So make sure you click the subscribe button. Thank you again for listening to another episode of Referral Secrets.